Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'm going to show you a really neat thing that we've added to Pixel Mash 2022.0. Uh, this is something that we've been working towards for a long time since we first envisioned Pixel Mash, and that is vector layer import as vector layers. So here I've got this tree SVG file, and this is a vector layer, so it's or a vector drawing, so it's uh, it'll be sharp no matter what zoom level you do into it. Um, and if I just drag and drop that into Pixel Mesh, let's import that. We have this Christmas tree uh, imported as a vector layer. And you can see, um, no matter how big or small I scale this, it's going to keep uh, sharp and it will always animate and nicely with um, transforms and whatnot. You can see, like on the, the, um, strings that these lights are on that those always because they're just a vector stroke no matter how large I scale this or how I rotate it or whatever they always will maintain their one pixel width um, and that can be handy for lots of different art assets um, another thing to note is that so like on these uh, Christmas lights these little white lights that I've got here uh, in the original vector file I put a stroke on those so that they will always, um, because they have a stroke, they'll always draw at least one pixel width. So even when I make this really, really small, each of those individual lights will still be drawn. And so that can be handy um, when you're making various different kinds of uh, vector art or pixel art that you want to have details always drawn regardless of how big or how small your asset is. Um, so let me just, um, just to compare, just to show you what this looks like. So this is a, a the same file that was um, rasterized in a different program before it was brought into Pixel Mesh. And so this is what most pixel art apps do when you import an SVG. They'll just rasterize it on import. And you can see how terrible it looks, basically. Um, you've got all these anti-aliasing effects on the edges because these rasterization algorithms try to make it look smooth but that ends up looking bad in, in pixel art and then uh, like with the the strings and the lights like they just don't scale well um, and it's kind of a mess and so um, and you can see over here like this SVG that we imported is it's a vector type layer and this one was rasterized to an 800 by 600 pixel layer so Anyway, it's uh, much more dynamic and just uh, can give you some really neat control. Um, now let me just show you a fun, some fun things you can do with this. I'm going to re-import this tree SVG. Uh, import, and then on top of it, I made a separate SVG file of vectors that was just the, the lights on this Christmas tree. So if, if I, let me just get the transform box off here so you can see what's happening. This second layer is just the lights, and the original layer is the tree with the lights, so these lights on this second layer are just going to exactly cover up the lights on the original layer. And I'm going to parent these um, and just show some of the fun things that we can do with this. So like on this light layer, I can add a glow, and that will automatically add a uh, glow to these lights. Let's make the glow the same color as the lights, which is white, and try it with some different divisions and maybe a three pixel radius there I think that looks pretty nice maybe actually let's add a um, colorize to these lights uh, make them maybe like a orangey color uh, let's go with red um, then uh, you can do some really neat things. So like I say, this is always like I can I can make duplicates of this. Let's um, let's copy this tree and make a, a background tree that's maybe behind this one. And so uh, maybe I'd go on the lights and change the radius of the, the glow. And we can give these guys a different color just to make this tree different. Let's make it pink even though I don't really like pink Christmas lights. Um, one fun thing to do to, to give a sense of depth is to do a colorize effect on um, the tree. And so let's make it look like this is fading into the background. I don't want this to apply to the children because I want the lights to still show up. 
But as I fade this colorize effect, you can see it, it's like it make the, makes the tree look like it's fading into the background. So I can make a tree right here that's sort of medium faded. Then let's duplicate this, make a third one back here that's smaller and further back. Maybe its lights only have a one pixel radius for their glow. And for the tree itself, we will really fade it back. But um, you can see on all of these trees, again, like uh, they just scale beautifully. Um, the lights will always have that, the, the string has that one pixel radius and the lights will always draw at least one pixel. Um, when I put this glow on it, it makes it a little bit more. But you can see the power of this. And so these are like, you know, three um, individual tree assets that are immediately ready. Like I can just select this and do um, export selected and do that on each of these. And then I've immediately got like three different tree size assets just from that one vector graphic file. Um, and, you know, when you save this with your Pixel Mesh project, it will save them as vector layers so it's never rasterized. But if you do want to do pixel perfect stuff with this, then any one of these layers, you can take the layer and um, you can bake the layer resolution or the, the resolution and effects. Um, and that will like turn that into then a pixel layer that you can go in and do your, um, you know, erase or whatever, do your exact pixel edits on it to get it perfected exactly how you like it. But once you bake it, it's baked. And so that'll no longer be a vector layer. Um, let me just show you a couple of other uh, files that we've been playing with um, just to drive the point home. This one's a birdcage, uh, just simple vector lines. Um, but this one has no fills on it. And um, let's import this. You can see again, it's just when it'll always keep those at a one pixel width. And it's fun to do things like, um, so with this, um, you can see here, it's not exactly symmetrical because of the way that it's rasterizing or uh, drawing this to a pixel layer. Um, and so one thing you can do with something like this is add a mirror effect. Uh, let's do this from the layer left and that will mirror it so then it will be um, perfectly symmetrical uh, regardless of how, it, how it's positioned or how you do it. And then you can add some fun effects like um, this one's kind of fun to do with it, like a, a gradient. Let's make it go from just like a light to a darker color and then maybe add a colorize to this. And let's do a hue style colorize and make it like a, like a golden bird cage. Yeah, how about that? Um, but then when you got something set up like this with your vector layers, you just, if you want to make different sizes, I can duplicate this and pull it over here and then scale it down. And with this mirror effect, sometimes it will double up that center line, but um, you can just position it how you like it. And like I say, if you find something that you, you want to perfect the pixels, just bake the layer down and then um, make, a, make your edits per pixel using that. But again, uh, just some powerful different ways to use these. Um, and then finally, let me just show you this panda. This was a, a SVG we made for our game, a video game we made called Shibuya. Um, let's just import this. But again, uh, you can see he's got a he's got a one pixel width stroke around his actually around everything basically, um, so that when I scale this or do it at different resolutions, that always maintains its one pixel width. But you can see, um, we'll just do a fun little animation with him just to show how nice it is to be able to use these transforms. So let me just move this pivot over here, and let's make a start frame. We're just going to make him like roll along here a little bit. And let's maybe make it have five frames, and then on the last frame it'll be maybe over here. And then uh, okay, this is set to boomerang. So if I play this like that, or do the preview window, uh, you can see that like with those transforms and everything, it's pixel perfect at every frame, 
and um, I've got like his his eyes are outlined with a stroke so that no matter how small I make him the whites of his eyes still show up there um, but this is really handy for doing transform based animations um, to be able to have these dynamic vector layers anyway there's there's uh, just a ton of cool stuff that you can do with this and we're excited to see what people produce um, and coming in the future we'll make the vector layers editable within the app thems, uh, themselves so that you can um, adjust these curves but for now it's just import but um, that's the next step we'll take it to is being able to edit vectors and then you'll be able to do some really really cool stuff um, so anyway we look forward to seeing what you make I hope you love it thanks a lot